on. Um, our next presentation is from the Bureau of Safety and Environmental Enforcement, Bessie. Oil spill response research update. Uh, our presenter is going to be Karen Stone. She serves as a program manager and oil spill response engineer in the oil spill preparedness division of the Bureau of Safety and Environmental Enforcement. Bessie is an agency under the US Department of the Interior that oversees oil production on the Outer Continental Shelf. Karen's area of expertise are in-situ burn of oil as a response techno technique and emulsion chemistry. So please welcome Karen and Thank you for being here, Karen. All right, glad to be here. Um, good morning, everybody. It's a well, almost afternoon for me here in the uh, Northern Virginia area where it is snowy and freezing rain and just lovely winter weather. Um, but I'm really excited to be here. I'm gonna be sharing Bessie's uh, agency update for you. For those of you new to oil spill response, BSEE stands for the Bureau of Safety and Environmental Enforcement, and we are part of the Department of the Interior. And um, I am going to share um, a lot of our active projects with you today. So um, I'm just getting a very, very high level overview because most, if not all of the principal investigators on this research are actually going to be presenting um, today or later in the week. Um, the goal of our research is to proactively shape the landscape of offshore oil spill research. Uh, over the past 30 years, Bessie and um, the agency, our predecessor, um, have well over 300 oil spill response related research. And um, our major focus really is to improve the methods and technologies used for oil spill detection, containment, treatment, recovery, and cleanup. And at the bottom of this slide, I have the link of where you can find our research. Um, if you didn't capture it here, I actually have included it on the last slide and um, you can get it there. And also this presentation is going to be shared after um, the uh, workshop. Um, to start with, I really wanted to introduce you to our team um, so you know who the different players are. We are led by Eric Miller. Eric Miller is the chief of Bessie's Oil Spill Preparedness Division. And Eric holds a BS in marine science and two masters, one in chemistry and one in environmental science. The response research branch that I'm part of is led by uh, Dr. Candy Hudson. Uh, Candy is the chief of our branch and she earned her BS and MS degrees in mechanical engineering and she holds a PhD in materials science and engineering. We are very thrilled to have Gina Coelho on our team. Most of you know Gina, she has been around the oil spill response community for a while and she's going to be heading up our chemical treatments portfolio. Gina holds a PhD in environmental toxicology. Next, we have Christy McKinney, and Christy McKinney is the program manager for our Mechanical Containment and Recovery Program. She holds a BS in Mechanical Engineering and a Master's in Systems Engineering. Jay Cho on the bottom right there is our Remote Sensing Program expert. He holds his bachelor's, master's, and PhD in environmental engineering. And you can see me at the top right there. I earned my BSPE in petroleum engineering and hold a master's degree in technology. And I lead up the in-situ and combustion um, portfolio and also work with emulsions. I also wanted to introduce to you our OMSET uh, staff. I'll be um, just giving a brief overview of OMSET and Dr. Tom Coolbaugh will be presenting um, the deep dive of the OMSET facility. But we have Mike Brennan, Paul Meyer, and Joe Mullen at OMSET. Mike Brennan is the OMSET administrator support specialist and also the liaison with the, um, the military base there. Mike holds an undergraduate degree in English literature and composition and his master's is in history focusing on the Atlantic world. Paul Meyer in the center there in the blue hat is our onset manager. Paul holds a BS in mechanical engineering and an MS in environmental engineering. And there on the right, many of you will see somebody you know, a familiar face, that's Joe Mullen. 
And Joe is our OMSET Senior Technical Advisor, and he holds a BS in Oceanographic Technology. So just real quick, uh, most of you know that OMSET will be offline uh, coming up after May for the tank renovation. Um, the beach system is gonna be upgraded. It will be improving the coefficient of reflection, reducing wave reflection, um, as well as just other uh, maintenance and upgrades that need to be done after five or six years. And um, it'll be back online in November, 2021. I wanted to bring your attention to two uh, upgrades that we'll be doing at the facility. The one is uh, we are considering the installation of a flume tank. And you can see the dimensions there, um, but we'll be putting in the wave generator. Um, it'll be, you'll be able to do um, skimming tests, boom um, tests, all sorts of things, just on a smaller scale. And um, you should be able to uh, work with cold water and ice testing in this flume test. There's gonna be windows placed under the water line so you can flow, uh, view flow conditions and also water clarity. Um, the idea is to tap into the main reservoir of the offset tank um, to use their uh, clarification system. So that's for a proposed flume tank. And as always, we are interested in your input. So if you have any ideas um, for items you would like to see at OMSET for this um, tank or the main tank, please let any of the Bessie folks know or Tom Coolbaugh. And finally, with uh, regards to OMSET, just wanted to let you know that we are hoping to expand the chemical lab or the chemistry lab. We're gonna be making it larger and increase the amount of instrumentation that is available. And like the other one, please, we welcome all um, ideas. So that's a little bit about our crew and OMSET. And now I'm gonna do just a, a real brief overview of uh, some of the different um, recently completed tasks that we're working on or current research. So we're gonna start with mechanical containment and recovery. And the projects listed on this slide are actually developing um, updated testing at OMSET. So project 1127 there at the top is the um, development of an advancing skimmer test method. SL Ross is conducting this research on our behalf and it's being led by Steve Potter. The project will develop a defined repeatable test protocol for testing advancing skimmer systems. The uh, resulting test protocol will produce skimmer test results that can be used as inputs to the recently developed estimated recovery system potential or e uh, ERSP calculator. Um, we hope that this protocol will be introduced to the ASTM 20 committee, F20 that is, and um, for their consideration into incorporation into an ASTM standard. Project 7024 is a Bessie project with Christy McKinney, Dave DeVitas, and Grant Coolbaugh to develop a uh, field scale test method for type 1 Zorbins. And this protocol will be socialized as well to the ASTM F20 committee with the goal of incorporation into an ASTM standard. Uh, we're hoping that it can provide repeatable, unbiased field scale test results to our stakeholders, including industry, oil spill removal organizations, manufacturers, and other type one sorbent products. And finally on this page slide, or um, the slide project 1123 is another project with SL Ross being led up by James McCourt. It is a dispersant effectiveness protocol. And um, the outcome will provide a procedure and protocol for dispersive effectiveness effectiveness testing. This is an update to a 2001 protocol that was in effect um, at the OMSET facility, but a lot has changed since 2001. So we have new wave generator, we have a greater understanding of the ambient chemical levels in the tank. We have technology for controlling the oil on the surface of the water. So this uh, tech or this protocol is being updated. And again, like the others, it is being submitted to ASTM for consideration as an ASTM standard. On this slide, we have um, projects that are continuation of earlier Bessie projects that uh, came into us as proof of concepts. 
On the left there, you will see Project 1103. This is advancement of an oil thickness sensor, and it's going to be um, two prototypes are being developed to advance the original work. Um, the first one is for a handheld unit, and you'll see there's a telescoping pole that can be extended to measure oil thickness either from the side of a vessel or off a test tank. Um, on the handle there, you can see that the oil thickness can be read directly from that tool. And you'll also see like a fishing harness there uh, for the user to help with that as the pole gets extended. On the bottom left, you'll see a prototype of the unit and this prototype is meant to be mounted on a skimmer or can just be floated at the apex of a boom to provide the information to the user. Um, and it's wireless and it can be read up to 600 feet away. On the right there, you'll see project triple one nine. This is advancement of a recovery efficiency center, uh, sensor, pardon me. Battelle Memorial Institute is conducting this research with Dr. Slawamir Winacki, and the objective is to advance the current uh, efficiency, recovery efficiency center, uh, sensor, pardon me. This sensor is real-time measurement, and it can measure the percentage of oil and water in the mixture. It is also capable of working with water and oil emulsions. It is accurate with multiple oils and different salinities of the water and low cost. Oh, Christy McKinney has uh, introduced this to folks and listened to feedback. And so several changes are being made based on that feedback. Uh, the sensor will be attached to uh, or be able to be attached to different recovery hose diameters. And also this has wireless communications as well. These next projects um, have an Arctic focus. On the left or on the top, pardon me, we have a uh, project 10 or 1102. And this is vessel ice management system conducted by Serco with Dr. Gregory Johnson. And the objective was to design, build and test an ice deflection system. And if this looks familiar, that's because it is. This was, um, the original project was a joint industry project developed for the More Ice program. And this project is taking the recommendations from that final report and implementing those. The new uh, system will focus on simplicity, scalability, ease of operation, deployability, and will expand the number of uh, skimming systems um, for which it can be paired. On the bottom right there, we have Project 1105, Recovery of Oil Under Solid Ice. It's an ROV system being developed by Phoenix International, and Daniel Pohl is the principal investigator on this one. This project is developing an ROV mounted tooling skid to detect, inspect, and recover pockets of oil under ice. Uh, the ROV will be able to uh, scrape and removal, uh, remove oil-laden ice crystals that form on the underside of the ice. It'll be done in several phases, but eventually the tooling skid will have a pumping skid or system, a manipulator arm with collection nozzle and a scraping tool, have a navigation system, and also will include lighting to allow differentiation of oil, water, and ice. And finally, for um, this area of mechanical recovery, we have Project 1144. And this is an enhancement to OMSET for their ice testing capabilities. And as you can see here on the slide, we have several um, projects that have involved ice. OMSET is improving uh, the process for which we can grow both freshwater and saltwater ice. We're looking at more efficient methods to deploy the ice into the OMSET tank and that for, therefore we can maximize um, the test time on the tank instead of worrying about uh, getting the ice into it. We're looking at uh, methods to manufacture frazzle ice. And then finally, uh, looking at the track system to be able to assess the percentage of ice coverage in the test area. Moving on to our remote sensing program that's led by Jay Cho um, at the top on the left, we have project 1122, which is an algorithm development for near real time data processing and mapping. Uh, Water mapping is conducting this research for us uh, and it's being led by Dr. Oscar Garcia. 
And this is a system that can process data collected from any compatible aerial platforms. Um, and it's all COTS type of uh, sensors. And um, the algorithm that water mapping will develop will be capable of identifying areas and locations of actionable oils to uh, response units in real time for tactical positioning and near real time for response planning. On the bottom right, we have a project uh, that is being conducted by NOAA with Dr. Chris Barker to expand the availability of forecast models to cover offshore areas where BSEs regulated facilities reside. This added feature will enable the ability to run web GNOME more easily using available operational forecast models. Couple more remote sensing projects for you. On the top, we have project 1121, which is the oil detection and um, thickness estimation. And this is being conducted by the American University of Beirut, being led by Dr. Imad El Haj. And uh, they are using electrical capacitance, or capacitance tomography, ECT, a lot easier to say there, um, sensing for oil detection and thickness estimation under ice. The middle project there, 1132, is a LIDAR characterization uh, project. This is being conducted by the Naval Research Lab, NRL, with Dr. Damien Gisette. And um, it's a process to automate the process uh, to display visualization of oil characteristics, including oil type, thickness and depth, all using LIDAR technology. And finally, on the bottom there, we have project 1144 which is, I'm just going to let it there. It's basically uh, some radar um, that is uh, being developed by Pacific Northwest National Laboratory, PNNL, with Dr. Robert Jeters. And um, this technology is using commercial off-the-shelf hardware to demonstrate oil detection in and under sea ice with FMCW radar um, and looking at the latest in commercial subcomponents and um, subsystems. Moving on to my portfolio, which is combustion and in-situ burning. On the left there, um, I have a project that is being developed by NRL under Dr. Steve Tuttle. And most of you, if you've been around, you've heard me talk about this project, um, but it, we're almost ready to commercialize it. So I'm, I'm really excited to see this baby off. Uh, we've been working on advancing the maturity of the Bessie burner um, and have pretty much reached a point that it is 99.99% .99 efficient for a nice clean burn. As you can see in the bottom slide, there's, there's really none of that black sooty plume associated with burning. Uh, this burner, um, it's intended for use in remote areas that are lacking in infrastructure, as well as near population centers, uh, not to mention fast water environments and probably salvage operations too. On the right, we have another project by NN, our NRL being led by Steve Tuttle. And um, this is a wellhead ignition study. And one of the potential remediation tools that's being um, sort of floated out there is for intentional wellhead ignition for wells that um, lo lose control. And these are offshore wells that are located on gravel islands. So NRL is looking at flow and spray behavior and the resulting burn efficiencies um, of what could take place. This study is currently under review by the National Academy of Science, Engineering, and Medicine. And I've only got a couple more minutes here. So I am going to move on to um, this slide, we have a herder burner um, jet ski that is being developed under a joint industry project. And um, Scott Pagow with Osri is gonna tell you about that later in the week. In the center, we have a Bessie igniter that Phoenix International Holdings is developing for us. And this is a robust igniter that's intended for use in high sea, um, waves, high wind, extreme conditions with ice. We'll be testing this at Krell at the end of March. On the right, we have a fire world study that is um, looking at some of the burn characteristics of fire world that show great promise. Um, we're gonna be studying the flow structure, thermal compositions, as well as emissions. 
Uh, Dr. Michael Golner with the University of California, Berkeley, will be showing you this um, and speak to this later in the week. Project 1085 is a study for California. Uh, NRL looked at five California crudes that were thought to not be ignitable because they emulsify so quickly, but NRL found that they actually not only ignite, but at about 20% water content, it improved burn efficiency. Uh, the middle project there is a flame reflexor study with Worcester Polytechnic Institute being led by uh, Dr. Ali Rangwala, as well as Krell being led by Kamal Arsava. It's a heat feedback system that captures heat that would normally be lost to the environment and transfers it back down to the oil slick. And uh, this will be or demonstrated at the Moby Burns later this summer in Canada. And there on the bottom, we have another project that will be demonstrated at Moby. And this is a linear burn project. You can see instead of the typical cantonary shape, we're testing in a long stem. And um, this will be part of the burning tongue uh, that will take place uh, this summer at Moby. And finally, my final slide here, I have two projects. One is the in-situ burning quantification um, system being developed by ARA under Paul Panetta and Rick Byrne. We're using acoustics and uh, photography to quantify burn rate and burn volume. And uh, this will be tested up at, at Poker Flat this summer. So we're excited to be up there testing at that facility. And finally, on the bottom right there, we have Project 7025, which is a study that is looking at the behavior of oil on ice um, after 60 days to see what the behavior is. And uh, what we found is, is several instances where there was uh, oh, the oil penetrated into the ice about eight inches which could greatly impact the integrity of the ice and um, could imp, um, really, I don't know, determine types of uh, response operations. So it could really influence that. So those are just highlights of what will be spoken about later in this week. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Greg. Thank you, Karen. It's just a pleasure to hear all these things. I, I, it appeals to me because it's all so pragmatic and, and building tools for things we really need. Is this sorbent efficient? Is it mostly water coming through the pipe or is it oil? And uh, you know, just such good practical common sense stuff that's gonna help us do our jobs better. So thank you for that. Thank um, you, we're excited. Yeah, Ms. Saw, Ms. Driscoll, do we have any questions for Karen? Yes, there are a couple questions from Steve Bushang. Would the handheld slick thickness measurement or device or sensor be envisioned to be cheap and easy enough to use to put in the hands of responders or is this something that requires complex calibration? No, this all of this equipment that I spoke about is for responders um, and uh, very easy to use, user friendly, and we always keep in mind the cost so it, it's meant to be inexpensive. Great, another question. Does the, uh, from Timothy Steflick, uh, does the combustion burner require a pressurized fresh air supply? And if so, what pressure and volume? All right, yes, Tim, it does um, require uh, that fresh air, but it's at a very, very low pressures and we're talking basically atmospheric. So it, it's just supported um, by, you know, 14, 15 PSI. Um, so very compatible with uh, equipment that's already on ships. Thanks, those are the only questions we have. Great, thank you. Excellent, thanks, Karen.